Did I hear last night, right, that this whole thing started with that location first? Uh, yeah, to an extent. And then um, you wrote it to that? Yeah, so, I mean, are we ready? Are we, oh, we oh, are rolling. Cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well, that's, that's, that's just been real. Yeah. <laughs> She's been filming a lot of bad things. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, so basically I wanted to do an idea. I've had an idea of a family intervention that goes really, really, really bad for a long time, but it wasn't until our producer, uh, Will Day Frank, who came to me, he's like, yeah, I've got this summer house, we can go shoot there whenever, and I was like, great, we'll do it in four months. And so I wrote it really quickly, and then uh, that was probably September, and then in February we were off shooting. And what's it like for you getting the green light to actually make that happen? Because I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've heard at this festival, you know, I sat on the script, and then finally this one little piece came in, and we actually got the okay to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I kind of work in, like, this, like, hurricane of energy, so as soon as I kind of decide that that's the movie that I'm going to want to do, then we basically just find ways to do it. Uh, so it was awesome, it was thrilling, and you know, I don't, I, it was just really great that it all came together, and fortunately it all worked out, because as soon as we touched down in New York to drive up to Maine, it was like the worst blizzard they have, they had in years, so I was like, oh, that's a great omen. Yeah. <laughs> it was our car got stuck. Yeah, yeah, it was brutal, many times. We were driving up, and there was like a car on fire on the side of the highway, and so I was like, Guys, this better go well or else we're I feel all... like that's a good sign for this kind of movie. Yes, yeah. definitely. If, they, if there's one thing you want to see before you start shooting a movie, it's other people's cars on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so did you work with a mostly New York-based crew and bring um, everyone up? I'd say, it was, I'd say it was split almost. We flew out uh, my cinematographer, we flew out Dean, we flew out our sound guy. So I'd say half and half, but we worked with this amazing company out of New York City called Ilium pictures and um, they basically hooked us up with a lot of the crew they introduced me to Brian which was just you know they basically they're responsible for uh, for our crazy amazing performance by Brian and um, yes yeah, so it, was, it was split cool and what about casting here is did you know exactly who you wanted for these roles or was there any mixing and matching involved in well I definitely knew that I wanted to work with Dean again we made a movie called ritual that came out uh, um, like the eve of 2014 <laughs> uh, at that night, and so um, yeah, when I wrote the role, I was just I knew that he was going to be the guy to, to deliver the kind of character that I wanted for him to play. Um, Brian, I mean, was a wonderfully happy. You know, it just it happened. And then Lauren Carter, again, um, one of our friends introduced us to her, and she really hit it off. And so what's exciting to me is like I like to be able to read a lot before we start filming and kind of adjust and we talk and we build from there and so that's uh, it was it was a wonderful pleasure to be able to work with these guys for the first time and have it be work out really well. What was your first impression of the script? Because I look at what you guys are doing on screen and I'm like shit thank god I'm not an actor because that looks exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <clears throat> you know I, I got connected once again through to Mickey through Alien Pictures who co-produced the film and uh, I think, you know, Mickey said, hey, uh, I take a look at this thing, I read the script, and I, it was just cool. I instantly um, knew I would be reading for Martin, and I just kind of geeked out over it. I kind of, believe it or not, I, I really related to Martin, I really empathized with him and cared about him, and we talked, and then we just hit it off. We kind of geeked out. Uh, Mickey's got such a huge knowledge and love of film, and we automatically uh, kicked it off about Taxi Driver, because that's one of our favorite films, and then we started to talk about other films that were influences, such as Bug, such as Jacob's Ladder, and uh, and we talked about Martin and what he cares about, what he's scared of, um, you know, why I wouldn't label him as crazy, I know he's extremely intense, but I wouldn't label him as crazy, and I, I just empathize with him so much that, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and we just got into his head, and it was, it was awesome, we just sort of geeked out over it. I don't blame you. Would you like that idea? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I read the script before I said yes. I mean, just sat down here, like, drinking, and he was like, it's gonna be great, we're gonna shoot it, it's gonna be main, you're gonna have an awesome mustache. And I was like, done. <laughs> it was um, a pretty awesome mustache. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. I grew that myself. We worked on that for about a month. Sure you did. Sure <laughs> you did. Yeah. Our mustache budget was pretty high. Yeah, it was, it was pretty substantial. Like, it was a third of the film. <laughs> Mustache in a movie, it better look authentic, especially with all the other stuff you have. Oh, that's, so all, that's also grounded in normal. Yeah, we didn't want people to be like, I buy the creature, but that <laughs> mustache. Don't buy that dude, stash. What a douche. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I read it, I was like, okay, great. Like, he gets me. I'm kind of like a burdened, kind of guilt guilt driven guy. Not oh, today. not in real life. <laughs> I, I, I can kind of identify with those characters who kind of look like, I guess they get fixated, and I particularly like it when shit goes crazy, like, I'm, I get a little intense, 
So I like kind of being that guy who you don't think could get intense, and then you get to see how intense I can get. Um, and then this, we got maybe 75% of the way at certain times. So I'm really looking forward to a time where I just get to go crazy. Exactly. Full on, full on. Um, yeah, but I jumped at the chance to work with Mickey again because he has an amazing vision and uh, there's elements to uh, a Mickey Keating film that I just really dig. So, and, and it's fun to hang out and drink and have fun <laughs> and make movies, man. And now we're in Austin and it's, it's great. So you guys talk a lot about backstory because there's a lot of there's a lot of the necessary information in the film, but it also obviously leaves you with a lot to think about mm -hmm. and wondering, you know, what was true before? How did everything really connect? I don't want to spoil anything here, but how much do you guys have to figure out where your characters came from and what really happened to them before all this? Um, so Mickey really called it a family drama. Really said, I want these first two acts to be a play, and we all rehearsed over Skype. We all talked to Mickey individually and talked about the backstories, the relationships between the siblings, because that's sort of a prime thing, is how Martin relates to his older alpha male judgmental brother and his younger sister, who he used to be buds with but hasn't seen in a while. And that's, Mickey really drove it in that direction. We didn't say, you know, it's horror, it's sci-fi, it's a thriller. We said, these are people, and it's like a play, it's like a family drama, which was awesome. It was infinitely helpful to, to bring out better more deep performances from us. And I think, you know, just on a core level, it's very exciting to me for, you know, characters to be discussing things that, you know, if they're brothers and sisters, they know things about one another that the audience doesn't necessarily have to know about. And I think that, you know, bad writing is just showing backstory where, you know, the audience is tuned in with it. And so if they understand their characters and how they relate to one another, then, you know, that's when they get in the room together, that's kind of the humanity that they bring and the realness that they bring to that, that's what we want to try to accomplish. So yeah, totally very important. And now what about the mythology of the alien, the pod? Do you know all the details about where it came from, why it exists? I don't know, like a ground zero zone? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Martin's written a report, he'll email it to you, it's about yes. 500 pages. I would be really crap. curious to it's read that. Crap. The thing is, uh, yeah, like, the yeah. diagrams of his genitalia. That's what it is. <laughs> the first cut of the film ran six and a half hours and it was all podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. a documentary. But it's going to be in the special. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, absolutely. But I think that, you know, as, again, like, it's kind of, it's very exciting to me that when you have something in the film that the audience is waiting for and anticipating that you don't necessarily give them all the answers because then it stays in your brain. As soon as you show the boogeyman in full light, then it's not scary because what I don't show you, and I can't tell you what's the scariest thing to you, but you can kind of visualize and connect the dots there. And that's very, very appealing to me. And that was kind of the goal. The way you edit that, like really helps towards the end because obviously you have to have the big reveal at some point but you kind of don't just rub it in people's faces there's still like a mysterious quality about this creature can you talk about the editing and i mean main, mainly just the black frames in it too yeah. because they pop up all throughout and it's like weird because it actually really does it's such a simple thing but it really intensifies things and make you like uneasy sure well thank you and uh, i think like what i wanted to do and the goal that i kind of wanted to be able to accomplish with the film was not necessarily have it be, I didn't want people to sit and watch this movie and say, okay, that's the, mon you know, uh, no, that's the monster movie. I wanted it to be more of like an encounter with a feral animal. And I thought that, you know, it was very important for us to, the realism that we kind of strive for in the family drama, I wanted to still capture that in the same way. So the flash frames, I think like, I just, I love when, when audiences squirm because they're not quite sure about whether they should be watching something. And like, and I love when audiences can't necessarily anticipate when, they're gonna feel very uncomfortable, and I think that it really helped to add, you know, this almost like like fear of just it's very intrusive, and and those flash frames and the the jarring editing really gets into your head. And by the end of it, I think it was funny because we went through a lot of variations of those flashes, and at one point they were just black and red. And so I sat there editing it, and there was a second where I was like. I think I might have a seizure and die right now. <laughs> you edited yourself. Uh, I, so I have an editor named Valerie Crowfeifer. Um, we've edited uh, going on four films together now. So we basically, and then we've known each other since college. And it's basically like, uh, you, you know, 
say it's you know shorthand now at this point. She can just anticipate. So how is it going through that whole process with her? Because by the end of editing, I'm sure you've watched it dozens and dozens mm -hmm. of times. Are you able to kind of step back and see if it'll scare an audience anymore? Oh sure, but I mean, I you know, I think you kind of just trust your gut instinct and know and know. All right, at some point, I knew this was scary, but by the 900th time I've sat through it, uh, it's it doesn't really look quite like a movie to me anymore. But she's very matter of fact, and you know, I'm basically. Try to be like, oh, well, we can just do this, and the audience will, you know, sit through it, and that'd be great. She's like, no, you know, like she's she very much steers in the in the direction of she's the mind of the audience, and so that's very essential. And I think it's the 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 key collaborator is someone who can basically take the idea from your mind but make it appealing to other people. <laughs> Back to the house really quick, what is the status of this house now? Is it still like intact or did you guys destroy it? Well, I mean, the, the, the basement is still horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the that big spider is, is still like all yeah, in that, that basement. That right king there. spider still hangs out there. Yeah. Pretty much I think he ate some of our crew. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, it, well, it was funny because the house got renovated right before we shot there, so it was beautiful and it was perfect. And then we went up there and we just destroyed it. So the producer, he shows up like we we're day two into filming and he was just like, what is going? And I was happy about that because I feel like if he was there on the first day, he would have tried to persuade me from not wrecking it quite as much. But I think the house is intact now. It's yeah, yeah that was, we were talking to one of the producers last night and uh, we destroyed a door. Yes. For sure. The pod door, like uh, the door, it was, I was like, do I say pod? Because we had like, couldn't say it for so long. But like uh, the door that the, the, the thing is trying to get to, we annihilated that door. But other than that, most of it was just coffee grinds. Like Anna, our set designer, did a great job of like setting that in a way that it could all lift out of out of the, the source. And we lived there. Yeah. Like we li literally lived there. We watched the Vienna sausage on the counter. You lived, you, not in that house. So, so no, I slept in Martin's room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we make coffee in that kitchen every the, day. The creature in the film, we actually found in the basement. Yeah. He was really? living there for like 400 yes. years. And it was day. Yeah. It was cool. And we found the Narnia closet in the basement. Like, Narnia exists. It really, it really added to the realism, and I think, well, you know, our crew crew slept in another house, and it was beautiful, and it was fine, but the cast was like, no, you're staying in this kitchen, you're going to yeah. feel real, so they all hated me by the end of the I'm, work. I'm super method, I have to go where the Allagash White is, so <laughs> it was in the house, and so I stayed there.